Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. We are happy to have you with us on the 11 a.m. Hour of Power service, coming to you live from Faith City Family Church. I would like to invite those that are in the building to stand with us at this time as we get ready to begin this Hour of Power service. So glad that you've joined us, but I would be very grateful to you if you would be willing to share this with a bunch of your friends and let them know Faith City is on right now and we are live and the Hour of Power is going to be a great blessing in your life. Now, I always like to remind you that we're an interactive program. You can get your prayer request into us right now during the praise and the worship whenever you would like in a few minutes after we have some powerful praise and worship we'll be praying you can do it through facebook send message or comment you can do it through youtube on the chat section but i'd love for you to do it because you see i've learned over the years that when you bungle faith with action it'll get a reaction from the lord our prayer team is ready watching their screens ready to get your request and we would love to pray for you how many by the raising of a hand could say you know without a shadow of a doubt by experience that god is a miracle working god can you raise up your hand and give him a praise i, I would say that's about 99.9 percent .9 that people believe that god is a miracle working god now I want us to stretch our hands out to one another and let's come and do agreement that this will truly be your hour of power. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for all of the lives that have been impacted, Lord, through these hour of power services. Lord, I know good and well there are people not only present here at the church or listening in the church parking lot, but God watching us right now. They need your involvement in their situation. Lord, they need things to get better. They need things to turn around. They need their health to get better. Lord, they need family and friends to get in a better situation with you. And Lord, whatever the needs are, we pray that during this hour, it will truly be an hour of blessing, an hour of miracles, an hour of turnarounds. In Jesus' name we pray, and by faith we receive it, and by faith we call it done while we're praising the Lord yes you go on and get in those prayer requests let's see what God can do because God is able can we put our hands together for the Faith City Family Church hour of power let's have a great time in Jesus praise the Lord Faith City we came to bless the name of the Lord he's worthy to be praised is anybody waiting on a miracle from the Lord or a blessing from the Lord? I believe that it's here, just like his presence. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Lord is here. The Spirit. 
Him, praise him, saints of God. Praise him. Lift your voice and give God the praise right now. Praise him at home watching. Praise him. He's everything that you'll ever need. Oh, Jesus is all we need. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord. Praise your Lord. Praise your Lord. What a song to set up the time to pray. We're going to, in a moment take any requests that have come in if you've just joined us just arrived at church or just tuned in it is not too late to get in your prayer request on the Facebook send message comment the YouTube the chat whether watching or whether in church it is not too late because we believe that God has a blessing with your name on it and I'm going to ask in a moment if Brother Harmon will bring whatever requests that we have in thus far. Because we know that God is 100% able. Yes, he is. How many can say God is able? Give me a louder. He's an able God. It might look impossible, but God said that's what I, I specialize when everybody else says it's too late. It, Brother Randy, I believe that your dad got a miracle the other week. If I remember right, he's been in the battle of his life. But look what prayer did for dad. Amen. You can't listen. I thank God for every doctor. But I thank God for the great physician, Jesus. So when the doctor throws up his hand, Jesus reaches out his hand. So don't you give up. Don't you get discouraged because God is able. Let's begin to share the requests that are coming in. Again, get them in. Faith and action gets a reaction from God. Carol says, please pray for my cousin, Eld, uh, Eldry Barlow, for her health and her mother's health to be restored. Daria, please pray for my family. I am having some struggles at my job, and I need the Lord to help me. Jackie, please pray for my mom, Joanna Janowski to keep regaining her physical mobility and her mental health. Continue to improve her, oh God, since she had her stroke. Debbie, please keep my family in prayer. Valerie Davis, please pray for my niece, Tiffany Harmon, who needs a healing. We believe God will heal her in Jesus' name. Amen, Sister Valerie, a member of our prayer team. And our prayer team is gathering requests still right now. Get yours in. Arlene, Arlene Gathers, please pray for my friend Will and his family. He has surgery coming up this week. Elaine, please pray for my brother David. He is going to the hospital tomorrow to have surgery on his back. Michael Boyer, please pray and restore my body from heart failure and diabetes. Brother Michael, God is able. Let the church shout amen. Heart failure is not too hard for God. Jeanette, Jeanette Longshore, I ask that you pray for Roy Longshore that he be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Dawn Reed, healing for my niece's body. Karian Simpson, I am from Jamaica, but my daughter attends your church. I'm asking prayers for my entire family and for myself to return back to the place I used to be with the Lord. Thank you all. Thank you, brother. Donna. Donna B, I give God all the praise and glory from my cousin's progressive and complete healing. How about a praise the Lord with this praise report? Thank God Almighty. This says, thank Faith City Family Church for praying for my son uh, so he can come home from jail. Let's see. Did it say he came home so he can come home from jail after seven years sister michelle count on it god is in the mix god is able god is able god is able uh this is i'm going to try to pronounce the name taneb inert uh entered a nerd prayer for ministry so that i can continue to help and feed the homeless 
bless my financial need and pray. I pray for Faith City Family Church. Thank you, my sister. Marie Char Chardoin. I pray my kids get back in church. They got away from it because of COVID-19. They won't even watch it with me on TV or Facebook. I pray that they get back and right with God. Marie, I take authority over the devil in the name of Jesus right now. He cannot have your children. And listen, uh, listen, children, you might hear me in the next room. You're not sitting in there with mother right now. But if you can hear me, come back to Jesus right now. Come on back to him right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on back to the Lord. Will Resto, keep me in prayer. I suffered a heart attack two weeks ago going in Tuesday to have another stent replaced. Karen, praying for the uh, Uguart family as they lost the mourn of dad. Cindy, I trust and believe that my daughter will turn her life around. I'm in need of a new home, and I need to be debt-free. Somebody shout, God is able. Kenyatta, please pray for my Aunt Cora's health and also for my children. And then, please pray for my husband, uh, Broderick, who was not feeling well enough to attend church service this morning. Love, peace, and hope, uh, Francis Woodard. Thank you for that love as well. And Brother Harmon, if there's any more, we'll pray for them as well. But those of you in the church, if you have a special prayer request, would you raise your hand to acknowledge that you need special prayer at this time? We are honored to pray for you, and we believe that God is able, that God will touch you, that God will work in the situation. And listen, if it's not for you, for the one you love, for the one you care about, they're going to get that touch from God in the name of Jesus. And in a moment, Brother Harmon is going to bring the anointing oil, and we're going to dig right in, and we're going to pray and call on God. First thing we would like to do is stretch our hands out. Church, if you'd be so kind to stretch your hands out, to these requests and brother Harmon and I will take the anointing oil and anoint in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit Father in Jesus name we want the devil to know that he is defeated and that he is a liar and that anything he tries will not ultimately work because God is greater than the works of the devil so we take the anointing oil, which is the symbol of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we anoint every single request in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We take authority over every sickness and disease. We command that pain and that sickness and that disease to come off, to come out in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for organs in the body to be healed. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for mental stability and peace of mind. We pray for families to come back to Jesus and to come together. Lord, we pray for those that are battling COVID-19. And Lord, if you can heal cancer, you can heal COVID-19. We ask, Lord, that this pandemic that has affected the world, God, would come to an end very soon. I pray that as we pray and people around the world pray, we will see an end-time spiritual revival of a move of God. The devil meant COVID-19 for evil, but God can turn it around for something good. God, right now, we pray for jobs. We pray for money. We pray for places to live, the lady that needs a home, the children that won't serve God. We take authority over all of it, and we say, right now, receive your miracle in Jesus' mighty name. I stretch my hand out to you right now. 
And I pray that the miracle power of Jesus Christ uh, touch you from your head down to your feet. Uh, I pray whatever needs to be healed will be healed. Uh, I pray you will get back your mobility. I pray that that sickness will leave your body. I pray that peace will come back to your mind. And I pray for household salvation in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pronounce, decree, and declare that not a one of your family will be lost. They may be lost right now, but things are about to change because God is greater than the sin that's trying to take out your loved one. Father, I thank you for household revival, household salvation, household deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Can we raise our hand and give the Lord a praise that God is working? Somebody watching at home right now, God is working. Matter of fact, you need to get up in your house and give him praise. You need to walk around that room. Somebody in the kitchen, you can hear me right now. Give God a praise because God is on your side. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Some of you crying. Some of you are weeping right now. Get out a picture of your loved ones and lay hands on it in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil to take his hands off of your children and your grandbabies right now now somebody you got a picture on the mantle lay your hand on the picture in the name of Jesus uh, and claim your household salvation father we thank you for it right now give him a shout give him a praise the devil is a liar the devil he is defeated glory 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 and I pray that everybody in church whatever you need God's going to give it to you and he's not only going to hook you up to the miracle that you need, but he's going to do exceeding abundantly above. I'm talking about overflow. I'm talking about excess so that you can turn around and tell somebody else uh, and say, let me help you out. And let me tell you why I'm going to help you. Because the Lord not only answered my prayer, but he did better than what I thought. And Sister Michelle, your son incarcerated seven years, uh, God is going to give him favor. God is going to give him favor. And when he comes out, God is going to use him uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody give the Lord a loud praise. Uh, you can't give in to the devil. You can't give up. You got to press on in your faith. Come on, give me a shout right now. I'll tell you, the devil is defeated. The devil is a liar. Valerie Davis, that miracle is coming in your family right now. Glory to God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. And now we're going to make sure that everybody, everybody is ready to go to heaven. I hope you live a long life, but I got, to, I got to be real with you. I don't have a guarantee of another day. I'm glad I'm alive today, but I don't know. You don't know how many days you're going to live. But I do know one thing. If I call on Jesus, he will save my soul. And we've got a lot of folks watching out on the streets because the Faith City is an outreach church. We've been on the streets of Kensington. Yesterday, Brother Harmon was delivering food on the streets of Wilmington and all the Chester, all the different areas. And now we got people watching us on their phones, and many of you are homeless. I want to look at you right now and tell you something. Just because you're homeless don't mean you're less than anybody else. God loves you just as much as he loves me. God cares about you just like he cares about me. And I'm here to tell you that your life is going to change. You just got to hang in there. You got to keep the faith. You got to believe. And I tell you, you're going to go from no place to live to having a place to live because God is able. God can do exceeding abundantly above. And you're going to go from no employment, not only to having a job, but you might end up owning your own business because with God, all things are possible. Can I get another praise the Lord, I feel the anointing on me right now. And I'm to tell somebody it won't always be this way in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you all, if you would, to pray this prayer after me. Friend, listen, why do you want to go to hell? There's enough hell on this earth without going there when you die. The Bible said if you'll call on Jesus, He'll save your soul. You might say, well, uh, I'm, I'm an addict. 
I got needle tracks in my arm right now. The Lord don't care if you're high right now. Call on Jesus and he'll save your soul. You might, listen, you might be an alcoholic. He'll save you right now. Call on Jesus. Let him save you. I want everybody in the church to pray the salvation prayer with me. And those of you that are watching online and watching out on the streets on your phone, I want you to open up your mouth and pray this after me. Come on, everybody shout it. Come on, say it. Say, Jesus, right now, I make up my mind. I am not going to hell for somebody else. I'm not going to hell for the devil. So I confess my sin. I ask for forgiveness. I ask you to wash my sin away. Come into my life, Jesus. Save my soul. Save me right now. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. Because the Bible said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And it's done. Let's give the Lord a loud praise together. I thank God I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. Because Jesus has saved my soul. Amen. Those of you in church, you may be seated. And the Lord bless you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. I'll tell you, I, I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for this powerful service we're having together. And we're coming to that time of the service where I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to reach out to, to you to give of your tithes and your offerings because I can't believe it. It's November the 15th, and about five days from now, six days to be exact, yes, is the big outreach we're doing called the Day of the Cross. Thank you so much. Would you give our outreach director, Brother Harmon, a big hand right now, working out on those streets, going to the people, taking the teams out, letting people know that Jesus loves you as much as anybody else. Now, this Saturday, try to get a vision of what I'm going to tell you. Can you see it? The team pulls up to Kensington. Now remember, they were in Wilmington yesterday as well. We go all over the place. Wilmington, Philly, Chester. Ken we, we like going to the places that others think there's no hope. Jesus is the hope. And so Saturday, here come team. We're going to set up the big crosses on the corners in Kensington, the heroin capital of the Northeast. Brother Harmon said he believes that we might reach between four and five hundred souls this Saturday. We're going to go in there with the boxes of love. These big boxes for Thanksgiving. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring them up first on the screen of that be all right, Brother BK. The boxes of love that will literally save lives this Thanksgiving. They have personal hygiene kits in there dry food, special wipes, products in there to help people that are homeless. And these boxes weigh 8 to 10 pounds. They're huge. You see, on Thanksgiving, if you're anything like me, I won't be worried about, am I going to eat something? I'll be worried about how much did I eat? Did I eat too much? But these precious folks on the street, they're trying to survive another day. And so, as we go out with the packages of love on this Saturday, let me tell you the kind of areas we're going to. Let's walk out on the streets together. Yesterday, Brother Harm and you and the team were there. I see Mom Green over here. She was out there yesterday. And I'm going to take you out to one of the areas that we've been ministering to. I'll bring the footage up on the screen in just a moment. You see, whether it's in Kensington or whether it's a tent city where the homeless are. And somebody said, what's that on the street? That, that's drugs. And I don't, I don't see the video. Maybe they're having a little technical issue. I'll just, if I have to talk through, well, there it is. Praise God. There's Brother Harmon. You just saw him. We just gave him a hand and leading the way. And there 
there's a, per, per, uh, a certain section of the park where there's needles everywhere and there's all kinds of things going on. But let me tell you, our team goes in there with unconditional love, handing out necessities to people, praying for people, talking to people, getting people's prayer requests and letting them know no matter what you've done, God loves you. He cares about you. How many know if it wasn't for Jesus, it could be me out on the street. It could be you out on the street. And that dear brother there, look at him, skin and bones, trying to make it another day, talking to one of our team members. God blesses us to be able to give shoes out to people as well. And of course, this dear lady's talking to Brother Harmon. He, she's telling him all about it, all the drama in her life as she's out on the streets. And one of our team members getting prayer requests. As a matter of fact, I got the prayer request from yesterday. I'm going to read them while you're seeing that video. David Pet Petrelli said, pray for housing and medical help. I have issues walking. I just got out of the methadone clinic. Hillary said, please pray I find the car. It was stolen. Kenny said, pray for me and my friend. We just want to stay safe. Sheila said, pray for the homeless in Delaware. Again, Brother Harmon and the team were in Wilmington yesterday as well. Pray I can get some treatment to conquer my addiction so I can go back to my family. Think about that. This says, pray for my family. Michael wrote this. Samantha said, pray for my daughter and grandbaby and my family's safety. Ivan said, pray. I've got a broken shoulder and I'm living out on the street here. I need healing and I need deliverance. Kenneth said, I need strength and safety on the streets. And Kimberly said, I just need strength to try to make it another day. Real people, real problems. You don't have to get on an airplane and fly halfway around the world to go help somebody. Jesus said, first go to the city that you live in. My mother always told me and my brother that charity begins at home first. Don't forget about all the people near where you live, but think about the people that live nearby. And so today I'm going to reach out to you and ask that you would, if you would be extra faithful in paying your tithes and giving your outreach offerings. It being Sunday, we only have till Saturday a few more days to be ready. As I stand here before you right now, I stand by faith. I got up out of the bed by faith. We're having church by faith. But we're going to do this outreach by faith. We don't have everything we need right now. But we've been doing this for a minute. And I'm going to say it anyway in the devil's face. I believe by Saturday we will have everything that we need. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Because this is not fear city. This is faith city. But I got to reach out to you today. I'm asking everybody in the church sanctuary, so nice to see those who are able to attend the church. The many that are watching online, I got to reach out to you and ask you to be generous today. The Bible said the first thing that we're supposed to give to God is our tithes. I always read this Bible verse in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 because it says when we do the first things first, God's going to pour out a blessing. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which says the Lord of hosts, that I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devil or the devourer for your sake. God said, when you give me 10% of the money that I gave you help to get out of the bed and make. How many know whatever money you make, you didn't make it by yourself? I need some amens. You didn't make that money by yourself. God woke you up so you could show up. He said, when you do that, I'm going to do three things. He said, I'll pour out a blessing. He said, number two, he said, I'm going to increase you. Number three, I'm going to give you protection. And then the prophet Isaiah was going through a rough time in the 58th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And the Lord told him to do something that is totally backwards to many people. He said, Isaiah, if you want to get out of your pit, 
go help somebody else who's in a pit. And look what he said in Isaiah, the 58th chapter. And he told him these words in verse 10, if you will draw out your soul. In other words, don't focus on your problem right now, but draw out your soul to somebody else who's hungry. Satisfy the afflicted one. He said, your light will rise up in obscurity and your darkness will be as the noonday. He said, Isaiah, I will also do this for you. He said, I will guide you continually. I will satisfy your soul when you go through drought. I will make fat your bones, give you health, and you will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water fail not. Isaiah said, okay, God, you want me to help somebody else. How many believe that when you help somebody else, you're going to get help yourself? How many believe when you help somebody else's child, God's going to help your child? How many believe when you help somebody else's grandbaby, he'll remember your grandchild? Because what you make happen for others, God is going to make happen for you. Oh, let's give the Lord a praise. I feel the anointing on every word I said. Pastor, what do you need me to do? I need you to do three things. Number one, pay your tithes today. Number two, I need you to give a special outreach offering. We are only six days away from the big Thanksgiving outreach to the homeless. And I need you to give your best gift. If you can give $100 or more, that would be great. But do your best above your tithes. We could also use some large gifts. And I know this might not be for everybody in the church service or watching, but if you've been blessed, maybe you could give an extra large gift. It would be so timely right now. Before I pray, I'm asking you, would you do it right now? Somebody said, well, I'm busy. Maybe I'll get to it in the next couple of days. No, this is a right now moment. This is a right now need. And I'm asking you to use one of these giving options. We got four ways that you can give, really five when you count them all up, and I'll explain what I'm saying in a second. But those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, I need, listen, the pastor needs your help right now. You can pay your tithes and offerings on our text to give platform, safe and secure, as many do. You can use the cash app method if you'd like. A dollar sign, Faith City FC2, lower, uppercase, doesn't matter. You can go to faithcitynow.com on any device as well. Click that one word, donate. It would take you to the link. You can also mail your tithes and special outreach offerings to the church at 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. That again, 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. And then the fifth way is for those that are present in the building today. And I must say that we have seen, especially at the first service, the first service probably had one of the largest turnouts we've seen since the pandemic because many cannot come right now and we understand that we're still in this together i'm your pastor whether you're in the building or you're on the other side of these cameras we are in this thing together and we're going to get through it in the name of jesus but way number five is those that are in the church would you do your best today i no, you've got an envelope in your hand. If you didn't get one, you raise your hand up. The usher will give you one. But if you could give your tithe right now in the service as you're sitting here and give your special outreach offering for this coming Saturday, we would be grateful. Shall we pray, Lord? We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that the doors of Faith City are still open. Somebody said, well, you all must be lucky. I don't believe in luck. I believe in Jesus. He makes the way, but Lord, I believe that we're still here. Lord, it's not been easy on Faith City. It's not been easy on the church during the pandemic. Hasn't been any on, easy on any church. But God, I believe we're still going because we don't just focus on ourselves. We're not an in-reach church. We're outreach. We're, we not only preach the word to ourselves and try to help one another, but we take time for our fellow man out on the streets. Lord, give us a miracle. Lord, we only got six more days to go. And Lord, we need some help. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you. God bless you. And I'll be back in just a moment.
each and every one of you, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts, whether you're here in the church building or whether you're watching right now. Without you, we are not able to do what we do for Jesus. I also want to remind you to stay encouraged during these unprecedented times by filling your soul with the best in gospel music through Reach Gospel Radio, the best in gospel 24-7. Let's give a hand for that. What a wonderful ministry that God has raised up there for the station nearest you. You can go to reachgospelradio.com. You can download the app. Uh, uh, in addition to listening to one of the FM stations to reach gospel radio. A couple of days ago, a big surprise came to the front door of the church from the Stellar Awards office in Chicago, Illinois. And I want Brother Harmon, if he would come right now, because you know sometimes some dear people, they don't believe it until they see it. But I want to show you that Reach Gospel Radio uh, won the 2020 Stellar Award for the best gospel station. And we're going to take the lid, okay? That Look at that beautiful padded box from Chicago that came in the mail. And now let me lift. This thing must weigh 25 pounds. Let's give the Lord a hand right now for the 2020 Stellar Award. Praise God. Reach Gospel Radio. Oh, I tell you, I've got names on this award. The Edwin Hawkins Singers. This is a legendary award. I got Dr. Bobby Jones named on here. My good, all these names from back in the day and to think that we're a part of the family winning a stellar award. Can we give God one more praise? I had to show it to you. True positive. Look what the Lord has done. Amen and amen. God's not only been blessing Reach Gospel Radio, but uh, I also want to give God thanks. Oh, Brother Harmon, yes, we don't want to lose that. Boy, that's so beautiful. Praise God. Boy, what a miracle. That happened pretty quick for Reach Gospel Radio, I have to say. And I also want to celebrate Brother Dana Saray. About three weeks ago, he won a Dove Award for one of the songs he helped produce. I just give God praise for his blessings. Amen. Now, congregation uh, that are present here as we're definitely needing your tithes and special outreach offerings, please know that as you leave the sanctuary, there are offering buckets on the tables. We are not permitted during the pandemic to pass out anything to anybody. We cannot have any buckets being moved around. But as you leave, please put that envelope in the bucket as you exit the church sanctuary. We will thank you so very, very much. Now, just before we get into the word of the Lord, remember Wednesday night is our hour of power as well from 7 until 8 p.m. People are keeping their souls fed, whether Sunday at 9, 11, or Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, I'm always asking you to like us on Facebook, to share, to like, and let's spread the content, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or even follow us on Instagram. We got a special promotion coming up in December. We're calling it the December Walmart gift card promotion because we know there are many people in need during these times. I want to invite you to be a part of our Watch Live promotion. For every Sunday morning service in December, whether at 9 or 11, we'll be giving away two $100 Walmart gift cards each service to bless families at this special time of year. To possibly win, you've got to tune in live, whether at 9 or 11, and send a comment or send message over Facebook or YouTube, the chat section, and tell us why this gift card would be a blessing to you or your loved ones. Our ministry team will select two people to be blessed each service with a $100 Walmart gift card for whatever your need may be. And I will announce the two families at the end of each service, every service in December. So make sure you're a part of the Faith City Family Church Watch Live promotion every Sunday in December. We not only reach out on the streets, 
but we reach out to those that are nearby as well. Let's give the Lord a hand right now. God is good. Our message today, I believe, is straight on time from God, entitled, an oh, thank you. I'm so thankful Brother Phil brought up the Thanksgiving Sunday because I was been, I've been so keyed up and tuned up for Saturday. But next Sunday, I can't believe it is Thanksgiving Sunday. Now, how did that get here so quickly? But we're having Holy Communion, whether in the church, whether at home with your own communion elements, or in your car in the parking lot. But this Wednesday night, Brother Al and the team will have the special communion. They're hermetically sealed personal communion sets that we had ordered. They're not open, only you open them. Nobody touches them. Nobody touches the juice or the communion waiver. It's your own personal communion. We'll be giving those out this Wednesday from 7 to 8 and this Saturday at the church from noon until 3 in the afternoon. You'll drive up to the front door and a team will bring your communion out to you so that you can have communion on Thanksgiving Sunday. Also next Sunday, virtual guest, Vashon Mitchell, great gospel artist and sharing a gospel song during our service. So don't miss Thanksgiving Sunday. I hope you'll be a part of it one way or the other. Our message is dare to believe for a next level change in your life. I'm looking at people in church and I'm looking at those of you watching. I decree and declare that God is not through blessing you, that new levels are coming. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what the pandemic numbers are. God is bigger than anything you'll ever face in your life. So don't you dare put a lid on your own life. God has the ability and the capacity to bless you and your children and, yea, even your grandchildren beyond your wildest dreams because God is an able God. But my question is, will you believe for a next level change in your life? I want to share with you quickly today four principles from the Bible on how to experience a next level change in your life, beginning with principle number one. Always believe. Always believe that you can experience a positive change in your life. Always believe it. Sometimes things can get so negative, so tight, so discouraging. It's hard to believe that things will ever get better. But let me remind you of who God is. In Ephesians 3.20, he is the God of more than enough. Now, glory be to God who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do, note the words, far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, and hopes. You were praying for 10, God could give you a 1,000. You were praying for this, but God said, I can give you that. You were praying just for a sleeping bag and a bedroom to call home, but God said, I can give you your own home because God is able. Last time I checked, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwelleth therein. So number one, believe that you can experience a positive change in your life. I want you to shout this after me. Shout, I believe that God can. Do anything I'll ever need. Luke 1 and 37 also says to us, For every promise from God shall surely come true. If God said he's going to do it, he's going to get to it. It may not come by Friday or the end of the month, but God is never too late. He's right on time. Hold on to it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You can continue to get in your prayer request. The prayer team is ready right over there. The next principle here, dare to believe for a next level change in your life is raise, and only you can do this. I can't do it for you. I wish I could. But you've got to raise your level of expectancy. You expect little, you're going to end up with little. 
but you expect big from a big God, you're going to get big. Come on, say amen. Well, Lord, all I want is just the crumbs from the master's table. I am not going to settle for crumbs when he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Yeah, I am not going to settle for crumbs when I could have a steak or I could have some fried chicken. Come on, say amen. God, just give me a crumb. It's time to get out of the crumb zone, and it's time to get into the blessing zone. In the name of Jesus, God is able. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Well, I'm going to shout when I read Psalm 27, 13, and 14. David said, I am expecting the Lord to rescue me again. How many expecting God to rescue you once again? So that once again I will see his goodness to me here in the land of the living. Now look out. Here's verse 14. Don't be impatient. Wait for the Lord. He will come and save you. Be brave, stout-hearted, and courageous, yet wait, and he will help you. I'm about to give God a shout. Uh, you've been waiting. Keep on waiting. Keep on praying. Keep on trusting because God is about to break through, uh, and he's about to blow your mind. Uh, can I get an amen from somebody? I'm talking about it's time for a next-level change in your life, pandemic or no pandemic. Principle number three. This is where I get in trouble, though, sometimes. I got to remember that a transformed mind precedes a transformed life. I got to work on my thinking. There was a preacher years ago who said some Christians' problem is this. They got to get rid of the stinking thinking and get a checkup from the neck up. If it's not right in your mind, it's not going to be right anywhere else. Uh, but you got to get your mind right saying, uh, I don't care what the news said. Uh, I don't care what my body said. Uh, I don't care what my relatives said. Uh, all I know is what God said. Uh, and if God said it, uh, that settles it. Uh, everybody else is laughing at me. But you ain't going to laugh at me when the miracle happens uh, and when the prayer gets answered. Can I hear an amen? Well, somebody said, how do I get my mind right? Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. But be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. Romans 8, 6. What are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you filling your mind with? It says following after the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace. But following after the old nature, the old us, will lead to death. It is time. Listen, check on the news once in a while. But listen. Turn the news off and turn on the gospel radio station. Uh, stop reading all the bad news and get into the Bible and read the good news. Uh, and you know what will happen? Uh, you'll change the who you are. You'll go from negative to positive. Uh, you'll go from I don't know what I'm going to do to say I'm going to look up into the hills which come in my help, my help coming from the Lord. He made the heaven and the earth. Uh, if you will get your mind right, uh, feed your soul right, you're going to turn into a new person and miracles are going to start chasing you down. Is there a shout from somebody right now? My God, I feel like running around this place. Somebody give the Lord a shout right now. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about a next level change in your life. My God, get your mind on Jesus and everything is going to be all right. I'm going on to my next principle here. Principle number four, change your thinking about some things. Change your thinking about yourself. Well, you don't understand. I was this, and when I was a child, this happened. And, and I'm sorry to hear about all that. But all I know is you are what God says you are. You're not what your uncle said you were. You're not what your relative says you are. You are what God says you are. And let me tell you, 
Because I know the time is ticking, but I, when I read these verses, somebody better get up and give a shout. Habakkuk was going through a season of lack in his life. He didn't know which way he was going to turn, but you know what he did? He made a decision to go to the next level, and he said, while I'm waiting for my change to come, uh, how many waiting for your change to come? Uh, some of us, I'm waiting for my change to come. Uh, some of you wait for your change to come. Uh, Habakkuk said, even though the fig trees are all destroyed there's no blossom left no fruit though the olive crops will fail and all the fields are barren even if the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty he said yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be happy in the God of my salvation. For the Lord is my strength. He will give me the speed of a deer and bring me to the other side of the mountain. I'm here to tell you your change is about to come. But you've got to hold on a little longer. You've got to pray a little stronger. You've got to praise the Lord and know that while you're praising, God is working because you're your change is about to come. And somebody raise up, I feel the Holy Ghost, my God. I know I'm into overtime, but Brother Josh, your change is about to come. Charlene, your change is about to come. Usher, your change is about to come. Yes, it is. My God, I feel something in here. Brother Al, I got to go on. I, I can't stop yet because I feel that my change is about to come. Can I get somebody to get up on your feet right now in the church? Can I get somebody at home and begin to shout and say, My change is about to come. I'm going from poor to blessed. I'm going from lonely to having some. I'm going from not knowing what to do to knowing what God has done. My change is about to come. My God. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody better put on a praise right now. Because I said your change is about to come. Yes, it is. So don't you worry. Everything is going to be all right. Take your hand right now. Give him a wave off and a praise. Who does the devil think he is to try to shut you down? You are God's child. And everything is going to be all right. So now I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm sorry, but I got to close out with a shout. Brother Dana, I need some shout music. We're closing out with a shout. Come on. Come on, get those hands together. Those of you watching, I'm going to close out with a shout.